Hello there once again, Commodore fans. This is Aphex Technol, back with a long overdue video. And uh, the topic of this video is uh, a bit of a revisiting of a video that I made about five years ago. And that video was uh, concerning this little guy here. This is the 6597R6, or R5, excuse me, 6A Vic chip. And uh, at the time when I made that video, I, you know, did some research and whatnot. And uh, as far as I could tell, this chip just didn't exist. So I had assumed it was just a misprinted VIC chip. So I tested it and discovered that it outputs almost no color. And I thought, oh, well, it's a misprinted, semi-faulty VIC chip then, right? Well, then, I got a uh, interesting message on my YouTube channel in that five-year-old video here recently, and uh, it really kind of, uh, you know, spurred me on to make this video, because uh, after doing a bit more research and doing a lot of thinking about it, I really think that that uh, person that sent me the message really may be on to something. So, uh, yeah, let me show you the message here real quick, and uh, it'll scroll through the message, and... I'll uh, do a little demo demonstration for you. All right, so we've got the, uh, the 6597 installed here in the venerable chip testing board. Uh, Yes, the chip testing board is still alive, and uh, it still sees regular usage here on the, the Commodore desk slash workbench, whatever you want to call this little thing here in the corner of my room. So let's fire this up and uh, get into the basic here. And uh, I went ahead, and I've got the Commodore 4064, which is also the same as the PET64 kernel loaded on my 1541 Ultimate cartridge here. So it's overriding the kernel that's that's on the board here. And this is what you would have got with a PET64. Uh, being that it was a black and white only machine, uh, you know, they did away with the, the blue color border and everything, and everything is just black and white like a PET. But it's, uh, as best as I can tell, it's still mostly compatible with Commodore 64 software. Uh, I haven't dug into this too incredibly deeply, but uh, let's load something up here real quick. Yeah, instead of Blue Max, let's do Jumpman Jr., the cartridge version. So here's Jumpman Jr. using this weird Vic chip. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can still see the border is green slightly. Uh, you can still see hints of the color here in this color bar because these are all of the you know standard Vic 2 colors that the chip can generate but I mean it it's almost not there um yeah it's just it's really strange if you put an oscilloscope on the color output pin of this Vic 2 chip the signals there it's just really really weak so you know I started thinking about this more and more and my, you know, Commodore was the king of reusing things. Uh, defective systems got returned to Commodore. They'd pull the boards out. They would rework them and then put them in, you know, other systems and sell them as new. Uh, that was a super common practice at Commodore. So what if Commodore had a batch of these early ceramic R5 Vic chips that had defective color output circuitry for some reason. And they thought to themselves, well, we're gonna be making the PET64, which is a black and white only machine anyways, why not take this batch of defective chips, give it the model number 6597, and use them in those machines? So, uh, I, you know, it's an entirely plausible theory. So uh, just for the heck of it, let's load something else up here. Uh, I don't even know what to pick. How about Gyrus? That's not very colorful, though. Yeah, I mean, you can see hints of the blue here in Gyrus. And uh, I'll even load up the Ghosts and Goblins thing here. 
uh, one more time. Here's the, now this is just like the, <laughs> the video I did five years ago. So yeah, here's the Ghosts and Goblins screen. You'll be able to see this better here because, you know, it's been five years. I've got a nicer cell phone to use. And, uh, I mean, you can see the colors. They're, they're there. They're just, you know, very, very subdued. You know, you can see that's red and that's blue and that guy's yellow. And you know, just a really, really strange chip. So, really, the point of this whole video here, and I'm going to put in an R8 chip and show you the difference here with this nicer phone you'll be able to see a bit clearer detail uh the difference between these you know this 6597 and like an r8 6567 so let me do that real quick and i'll continue uh narrating all right we've got the r8 in there let's fire this sucker up we still got the 4064 kernel loaded in but that's no problem and uh this is just a quick demo, so let's do Ghosts and Goblins again. You notice it doesn't have the little timing glitch here in the, I guess you'd call those raster bars. But yeah, look how completely different this looks. The colors are very nice and vibrant with this R8 chip. So, I, I mean, really, the point of this whole video here, like I said, is to basically put a call out to the wider Commodore community. Does anyone out there have or know someone that has a PET64 machine in their collection? And if so, will they pop the hood on it for me and check to see if their machine has a 6597 VIC chip in it? Because the thing that astounds me about this whole thing is that could it really be possible that there was a version, you know, of a VIC chip the 6597 that really nobody's known about until now. Because if, you know, if this really turns out to be true, that's essentially what this means. That there existed a, you know, a version of the VIC chip that absolutely no one had any clue about existing. So, uh, yeah, if anybody's got a PET64 out there and would like to take a, a look under the hood for me, and see if their VIC chip in that machine is indeed a 6597. That would be super interesting to me. And uh, if anybody happens out there to be able to do this, uh, you know, you can comment here on this YouTube video. I'm also on Twitter at Apex Technol. You can DM me on there or whatever if you have any pictures or whatever. But yeah, this is um, one of those Commodore mysteries that I, I inadvertently run into that I find super interesting. Because, you know, I mean, I love repairing Commodores, but at the same time, the historical aspect of it, too, is also really interesting to me. That's why I have all these different, you know, variations of chips and boards and machines as, you know, they made them through the years and continually updating. Because that all that stuff is just fascinating to me for some reason. So, yeah, anyways, that's about all I had for this video. Uh, you know, it's a bit of a revisiting of a five-year-old one. But uh, like I said, if anyone out there can really help me solve this mystery of the, you know, the potentially unknown Vic chip variety I have here in my hand, uh, that would be awesome. So yeah, anyways, uh, it's this has been Aphex Technol, and uh, yeah, I hope to make some more content in the future. Uh, things have gotten a bit, you know, a bit more calmed down in the world situation, and uh, I've got some some ideas and things. And you know, as always, no promises. But uh, if I find something interesting, I'll come back with the video eventually. Anyways, I uh, hope everyone has a good one. And uh, Aphex Technol out. I will talk to you all again soon.